Yes, people, we are back, back with a bang, back for another show. We're going to be talking all things Premier League, all things fan debate. As we look towards the internationals, we're going to talk about Bakayo Saka's injury. Is he injured? I hope he ain't. I please, please tell me he isn't injured. I really hope he ain't. Uh, I don't think he is. We're going to talk a little bit about what that might mean uh, if he is, but also the international break itself and why players have to play an international friendly when there's a title race on. I mean, who cares about England's friendly against Brazil and Belgium? Not me. Uh, I'm more interested in looking at what's happening top and bottom, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Big up to Dave. Big up to Dave. Big up to Connor. Big up to Matt. And big up to Emilio, who, by the way, is just looking so suave, man. I mean, he's got the vino in hand. <laughs> I mean, he's on holiday yeah, in Spain. Go, but... Do you know what I mean? This, Our yeah. man in Life can't be better. <laughs> Life can't be better, right? Uh, sorry if you're going to a lot of noise. It's a lot of... There's waves behind me. A bit... bit... Choppy today. It's been a. It's been oh, you're just making us jealous, degrees. man. Look at this. I was sorry about the sea behind me. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Look. <laughs> yeah, it's all pitch black. But I'm doing. So Dave Regler, you're in. Where were you? In Australia, weren't you? A few weeks ago, when you did a show out of there as well. Yeah, I did a podcast from Australia. Yeah, a couple of times on um, at Sydney and uh, yeah, the that Blue Mountains. Commitment that. I mean, it was like 5 a.m. where Dave was. Do you know what I mean? He's still on. What a legend. It's no, stupid. If, I, if, if I'm honest, it was a bit silly. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if it's the evening, it's much, much more fun, isn't it? You know, have a few beers and, and just get on with it. It's good fun. Unbelievable. <laughs> Listen, um, well, it's a pleasure to see you all. And uh, Emilio, it was a pleasure to watch you on Saturday. Mm. Battering <laughs> the hell out of the chicken and ball FC. Uh, when, a chick, when a chicken goes to a cottage, mate, chicken cottage is never going to end up well, is it? That's all I'm saying. I was absolutely buzzing to watch it. I can't stand them. I've had Deji on my case. Are oh, we going to finish above Arsenal when we beat Fulham? And when we ah, oh, you didn't beat Fulham. End of that. Uh, Emilio, let's be real. You were class, but I think a lot of people have been saying how bad Tottenham were when really Fulham deserved credit. I thought, man. Same old problem. Before I do that, let's say a big call out, Dave. Obviously, big birthday the other day. Happy big birthday, legend. Call out there. Yeah, He's birthday. a legend. Big 60. <laughs> so, yeah. Obviously, me and my beautiful wife, she's actually listening to the show as well today, Potsy. So, she's probably going to be maybe commenting up. here as well. Big, big up to Calais. Steve Reynolds and Emma Reynolds, they came, they drove down three hours to meet me yesterday and my wife. So, we, we spent a couple of days big with up, them. So, look, up, and, then up, up, and, then, and then we thumped. And then we thumped. Tottenham 3 0 last week. Deji, I couldn't do the show with Deji because I was getting myself ready to go to go away and, and I was rushing to go to the game last Saturday evening. But I haven't heard from Deji before the game or after the game, not surprisingly. But, but here's clearly they're gonna win they're gonna win the Premier Massive League, aren't they? I forgot. Gonna, they are gonna win the Premier League, of course. But um, look, can't get better. First clean shit the first game that Tottenham haven't scored all season. I think it was like 25, 30 games they haven't they've scored a goal every game. Not against Fulham. And we were class from the from the from the first whistle to the end. Could have scored more goals. Tottenham were a bit wasteful in front of goal. You know, you have to ride your luck at times, but let's not kid ourselves. We were class for 90 minutes. Pass it and knocked it about well. Great offensive attacking qualities. Mooney's rich vein of form, you know, play of the play of the month, play of the year so far in the last couple of months. He's, he's what, scored six goals, two or three assists. This was a player even even myself, wrote, you know, I wrote him off before Christmas saying he's not good enough to play in the Championship, let alone in the Premier League. And he's just got better and better and better. And, the, you know, who needs Mitrovic when you've got players like that, 22 years old, got the right manager to coaching him, developing him, maturing him. And he's becoming a very complete player. I know it's early days. I'm not going to get carried away, but you don't score six goals in six, seven games if you don't have potential. I think he's, he's, the way he's going, he's got his head in the right place, got the right manager. We can keep the manager there for another two or three years. This guy has got potential, right? And but overall, from Bert Leno, much more assured in goal. He's had a few dodgy uh, appearances since the turn of the year, but he looked a lot more secure. We've got Tosin and Bassi, central defence look class. And we've just you know when you've got the full, all the players available for selection, it makes a difference. And I did say on the show two or three weeks ago, Potsy, I said, look, we've got to play Tottenham at home, City at home, Liverpool at home, Newcastle at home. Will affect the Premier League Championship contenders because then what none of them will like to come to Craven College. I said that two or three weeks ago. Tottenham came there, underestimated us and got thumped good and proper. Man City and Liverpool won't relish coming there as well if we play the way we did last weekend. So overall, very happy. We're safe. You know, we can we got got what, eight, nine games still to play. Let's let's play to our full potential. I don't want all this nonsense about European Europa League and all that. We're not ready for that. Let's just enjoy it enjoy the moment, get to the end of the season and push on for next year, whereas we're seeing all these other clubs 
losing points. Penalty. Leicester City are going to get promoted, probably going to have a points deduction. I just want to stay in the Premier League. That was always a goal. We've done that now. We can push on. And similarly, we could influence who goes down as well. We've got, still got to play away to Forest, away to Sheffield United. And we've got to play, Dave Gregory, we've got to play away to Luton. So we can influence top and bottom of the table. So, But we've got nothing to, nothing to play for, essentially. So you know, let the party begin. Let's, let's enjoy the next eight to ten games. But we were very polished on Saturday. And I think... And like you said, Potter, we never get any respect from the neutrals. Except for everyone on this on this group, of course. You know, you gave us a lot of kudos to Fulham. But the media, it's all about Tottenham this. Tottenham didn't do this. They were wasting from a goal. No, Fulham were better for 90 minutes. That was a difference. But we got no... Right. As usual, I keep saying, we never get we never get any credit. Never. Because with little old Fulham, no one expected Fulham to beat Tottenham. It's the same old story. Same with Matt, Brentford, Connor, Everton. It's the same old thing. We never, never get any respect. So... We've got nothing to, nothing to play for, nothing to worry about. Let's just enjoy ourselves and hopefully influence who wins the Premier League and who gets relegated in a few weeks' time. So, yeah, life, life can't be bad. Look, I'm here. And, I'm <laughs> <not playing in. laughs> and a glass of wine, so sorry to rub it in. <laughs> no, you, listen, you enjoy it, mate. You deserve it. I'm glad that they did it. Obviously, I can't stand Spurs. They drive me in. Absolutely insane. They're fan base. <laughs> Most deluded bunch I've ever met in my life. But... If they're going to finish above Arsenal, like Deji says, then they're going to have to do it the mm. hard way now by losing to Fulham. I'll tell you that now. They've got to win every single game and hope that we lose three or four now. So <laughs> that's what they got away. I can't stand them, honestly. But big up yeah. to the Spurs fans in the chat because I can see you. Um, but listen, uh, big up to you, Emilio. And you say this, oh, well, we haven't really got much now to play for, blah, blah. I know a few people on this very channel and this very panel that would happily swap places if you mate, trust me. So uh, you enjoy it, mate. And uh, yeah, you know, exactly. you go, you, and then you go enjoy home it, form. Mate. Yeah, home form has been good this this only the last couple of months. You know, we beat Brighton comfortably three 0 a few weeks, but done the same against Tottenham. Obviously, beat your boys at the, in the New Year proxy. So look, yeah, these teams will not enjoy coming to Craven College because it's coming. I'm say a fortnight far from it, but the way we play football, if we have all our players fit. City and Liverpool, we've given Liverpool three tough games already this season, so they they need to come there and get three points. And City, you know, ultimately, not, this is not the best City side in, in in my living in memory, so I think they're beatable. Well, listen, if but you want to take not... points off them, then please do, Emilio. If you yeah, want to take points off them too. <laughs> I pray with all no. my might that you do. I mean, I must say, I was doing a show the other night and we were two of the Arsenal boys. And again, no one picked out Fulham away. They all went, oh, maybe Villa can do something, please. Or maybe they got mm. hard one at Brighton or what is it? No, I just went over, skipped over Fulham. I don't know why. We lost mm, there. I don't know why. You know? I don't know why. Yeah, it's just mm. a tough place to go, man. Nobody looks at Fulham away and goes, oh, that'd be nice. We'd enjoy that one. That'd be a nice three points. No one does that, man. Like, I can. Everyone on the channel would not do mm. that. I can tell you that now. You know, Connor wouldn't do it, neither would Matty, and both of days wouldn't. There you go, 5 0. <laughs> so, you know, you look at him and uh, listen, it's. It, I chose not to mention that, Dave. Sorry, I didn't I deliver it in. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Lawless as well. We some Lawless 5 0 as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well. Don't forget yeah, that one. They're don't a great that side. One. They're a truly great side. They are, you know what I'm saying? Truly, don't don't don't, uh, don't let him forget that one. Crikey, I'll tell you that now. He's on holiday. This he's on holiday himself. He's gone to go and clear clear his head. I think. Um, but yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, big up to you, Emilio. Honestly, Thank big up you. to you. Thanks, let, let me um let me ask the panel about this Saka thing because it is breaking news. Um, anyone think he's injured or is this Arteta playing a bit of an Alex Ferguson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be. Um, I mean, to your point at the beginning of the podcast, like it's it's a difficult one with these stupid friendlies. And don't get me wrong, like I feel like all of us still love international football, and we still want to see England fine tune their their squad and whatever. But I just feel like in the personally in the last few years, especially with the the introduction of the that crappy league table, Nations League and stuff. Like obviously they've tried to market those friendlies to actually mean something but ultimately they still mean absolutely nothing and if it like this is this is probably going to be the best premier league title campaign in the last what 10 years maybe so i can understand if if there's going to be some of these like little tricky tactics and whatever and i get it so yeah i mean yeah fair play like uh this this these friendlies are pointless there's a bigger thing here on uh, at stake so um yeah i i think it's a bit of gamesmanship personally but you never really know and also like how how much does something 
constitute an injury. You know, if someone's got like a little niggle on their calf or something, they might not be injured. But, you know, if you play 75 minutes, you might do it worse. So, like, it's quite hard to categorize as well. But, uh, yeah, just just pointless. There's no, I, I don't, I wouldn't have a go at any club for not risking a star asset in these pointless friendlies. I mean, I, mean Connor, I... I, was, I was listening to the overlap this morning with Gary Neville and Roy Keane, right? Gary Neville made a great point. He said, look, Sir Alex Ferguson said, there's seven of us game with England. You three are going. You three are injured. And I thought, <laughs> that is class. Like that, yeah. that, it was my, And he said, I didn't mind about December and November and August ones. But March yeah. internationals, you don't go. We're winning a no. title. And I, and I kind of looked in. I thought, oh, Mikel Arteta has clearly said to Gabriel, who's pulled out, and Saka, who's pulled out, you ain't going. And I've done that's the no, right thing. That's no coincidence, is it? That's no coincidence. Nah. C- it, it, City it, away not. next. City away next. There we go. <laughs> I didn't that's know that. Yeah. important, mate. City away next. I ain't going to have, like, Saka and Bloody playing against Brazil and Belgium. And and Gareth Southgate won't look after him, by the way, because he never does. Nah, Saka. Yeah, because he's one of his best players. So he's not going to sit there and say, oh, you just give, it, give yourself 20 minutes, mate. That's all you need. He'll play him the whole time because... You know, fair play to Southgate. He wants to win and he's got to win and he's one of the better players to make him win. But, Connor, I mean, I listened to it, bro, and I thought, do you know what? Gary Neville was spot on and I didn't ever used to blame Sir Alex Ferguson for doing that. And, you know, if you were in the, uh, my situation, would you want Saka playing for England in these two games or would you want him resting with, with, with Arsenal boys? Uh, to be fair, mate, if I could, I'd, I'd stop Bramford and Pickford going just because of injuries. I'd, wow, I'd there you go. Him if I could. Um, yeah, I mean... They're not, they're not two little games either. It's not Macedonia and San Marino. It's Brazil and Belgium, which are knockouts of a World Cup, you know, type games. They're two big countries, um, which is a little bit exciting. Uh, but it just comes at an awful time. You've got, you know, Jurgen Klopp moans about it. Um, Pep Guardiola has mentioned it. A lot of other managers have mentioned fixed con- fixture <laughs> congestion. Uh, and this time of year, it does get really busy, especially if you're one of the teams that are still in the um, in the FA Cup or into uh, you know European competitions. That's a lot of game time. I I can't believe that when they're on about players um, and their fitness so often nowadays, that one of the first things they haven't looked at getting rid of is the March international friendlies just because they're not really needed, are they? And, you know, the players that are going aren't the players from the bottom half of the table. They tend to be, bar a few, they tend to be players from one of the top six clubs who tend to be up and around there fighting for the for the title or European places. They tend to still be in at least two, one, two cup competitions internationally and domestic. So, yeah, it's just mad that this hasn't been notified and been like, oh, do we really need these now? Um, mm. But yeah, I've got no... Mate, if I was a football manager, I'd never let any of my players go. I'd have them abstain. 100%, man. Dave, why are we yeah. playing these in March? Did anyone anyone tell me this? What is the absolute urgency of this? While well, people are trying to stay up, people are trying to get back from injury themselves, people are going for titles, people are going for top four in Europe. What the hell's going on? Oh. Hang on, I got you. I got you now. I was about to say. I don't know what the thing is. The thing is, what I'm, I'm, I'm worried about a bloody England under twenty one match where we've called (laughs) off. But to be fair, it's the same situation for you guys. You know, you've got players in top team. We've got a centre half, one of our last standing ones, going off to play under twenty ones football. And you're thinking he could be injured too. I, I don't get it. I just, it's all about the coin, isn't it? It can't be anything more. It can't be anything more than that. Um, it's pointless. You, you know your best team already, don't you? You know who you're going to take to the tournament. You know where they're going to play. The likes of Saka, he knows how he's going to play. Why, why even pick him? Pick someone else. Not if you're, you're Southgate, Dave. Not if you're Southgate. He's still tinkering, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, but you know that's yeah. the point, isn't it? You know why not? Why not put some of your fringe players in? Why not give them a chance to see if those ones are going to be the ones that that might make that extra step up for when we go to a tournament? You know how the other players play. You know, do you care if we lose to Brazil? I don't. There's a bigger fuss today about the blooming shirts, let alone anything else, you know. So I'm not, I'm not worried by it. I'm literally not worried by it, and I just think it's wrong. I think it's wrong. But then again, you see, I've only been in the Premier League one season. Didn't used to bother me, did it? Really, didn't used to bother me because we never got, <laughs> we never had these breaks before, you know. <laughs> so as far as the national, I want the national team to do well. 
But I wouldn't want the national team to, and this is going to sound terrible, I don't know. I don't want the national team to do well at the expense of my club. And um, you're glad Ross Barkley didn't get called up then, Dave. <laughs> uh, well, the point is, he's been our, it's been terrific for us, hasn't he? I don't yeah. care. And he's just been superb. And had he got a call up and it'd been well deserved. But, you know, part of me says, you know, let's have a let's have this break and let's see if we can re- rejuvenate our team because we've got a hell of a running coming. And if we've got a nine game season and three of those for me are possibly unwinnable. And, um, you know, so I, I'm, I'm not even going to watch the football. I'm not going to watch the internationals. I'm not bothered by it. Really not bothered by it. Why are they here? It's got to be money. Can't be anything else. Or, 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 or your wafer and FIFA saying you've got to play them, isn't it? And um, Madness. It's madness. Absolute madness. And I hope no one comes back injured, apart from anybody from Arsenal, Man City, and, <laughs> <laughs> and Spurs, who are three out of our next four games. Here's the lad, mate. Much appreciated. Um, I mean, listen, Dave, I'll come to you on it. It is a bit of a madness. Gareth Southgate's under a lot of pressure. There's re- links, there's rumours he's going Man United, which I'm praying with all my might that he does. It'd be brilliant to see. Um, hopefully he does. I mean, if this is what Jim Ratcliffe's idea of taking Man United back to the top is and appointing him, then uh, they have definitely got the wrong guy in charge. But um, listen, this is a madness, isn't it? Like, we're playing these England games. You're trying to stay up. I'm trying to win a title. You know, Connor, Matt and, and Dave are with you down there. You know, Emilio's chilling in Spain with a wine. He don't care. But you know, like we're all we're all sitting there trying to actually look at winning tank or trying to get staying up in this league. And we got bloody prey in the next two or three weeks that nothing happens with us. And we've got a bloody England game on top of it. Or two England games and internationals, by the way. It's not just England. You know, all of your boys as well over at Forest, they're gonna be playing. It's honestly, mate, it's mad. Yeah, well, it, it I mean tonight means a hell of a lot to Wales. I know that. So but we've got Nico. Nico's probably going to be playing tonight. You know what I mean? Um, a few months ago, it would have been we would have been worried about Brennan in particular. But you know, I can I first and foremost say I don't do envy very often, but I'm doing it right now at Mr. Dinello here to my <laughs> left, right on the screen. Look at him! What that is the high life, folks. Just look at that man there. Absolutely wonderful. Oh, um, and you know what? Dave. It's interesting in the comment that the name of the greatest of them all has just been raised, Brian Clough. Mm. Now, Brian Clough's view was that footballers play too much football and he was famous, especially with the great team that won European Cups, for not training. I've talked to two or three of them. I talked to Gary Bertels, the great Gary Bertels, and he was saying, he said, mainly we'd come in, we'd have a walk up and down the banks of the River Trent, kick a ball about, if we'd lost, he'd make us run through some nettles and then we'd just go back home or we'd go <laughs> to the pub. And, and literally, Forrest, you know, Cluffy's idea was, and, I, and I, I subscribed to it a little bit myself when I ran a team, was the 90 minutes, or as it is nowadays, the 90 plus 10, that matters. Don't do too much in between times. Fresh. You know, I, I remember meeting, I remember coming back from a Forest game many years ago and Forrest had beaten Villa 6-0 at the city ground, right? And I'm getting a train from Nottingham back to where I live. Uh, at Etoxeter and Franz Carr got on the train with his mum right and I'm thinking what are you doing and Cluffy had said to Franz Carr go home and stay at home for a week and don't play any football right and I think for the lads at the top the City boys the Arsenal boys the Liverpool boys and then the, the, the lads trying to get it you know I mean pretty much everybody <laughs> apart from Emilio has got something to play for you know I mean we've got Palace a week on Saturday it's a colossal game we've got nine colossal games Dan, you've got nine colossal games. You know, Dave's got nine colossal games. Connor, Matty, we're all in the same boat. <laughs> Again, maybe not Mr. Dinello, but the rest of us have got have got huge defining games to come up. You know what I mean? And and really, you know, I'm 12 of ours are on international duty. And 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 maybe apart from Nico Williams, they're playing pretty meaningless games. You know, and the the Wales game tonight is huge. That is a huge yeah. game, really. And they're going to have another one. So, you know, first fair with fair, Wales and Finland and Luxembourg and some of those, they've got real big games because they want to get into the Euros. But the England games, I mean, you know, you take Brazil. I mean, Brazil these days, they're just another team. When when I was a kid and when, you know, Dave was a kid and Emilio and what have you, Brazil had this mystique about them. Now they're just another team, as they proved at the last few World Cups. we got all this samba stuff and, you know, people dancing and what have you. And then Brazil just go out and play like another 
ordinary team. So I don't see the point of that. And same with Belgium. So, I mean, I am ne- just to nutshell it, I've never been massively predisposed to think to myself, go, I want a ticket to see Brazil at Wembley. You know mm. what I mean? So it, it, it doesn't, there in a nutshell is why it doesn't mean very much to me. All that matters to me is Palace next Saturday. And the same for you, Dan. Buka, you know, Bukayo Saka, if I'm Arteta, do I want Bukayo Saka playing two games before I go to the Etihad for a for a vast fixture? No, I don't. You know what I mean? So I can understand managers not wanting to, you know, sort of risk their lives. I mean, if you're Luton Town, for example, I mean, it, it struck home to us last week in the away end just how bad Luton's injury list is. It's it's awful. You know, we've got our own injury list. You know, so for all of us, there's there's a lot to be there's a lot of jeopardy with these friendlies. And, uh, you know, are, are they going to play? I mean, I don't know. Are, are England going to play? So, like, they usually, they'll play. Are they going to play two more in June before they get to the tournament or what? If they are, then these are even less relevant. Crazy. It's absolutely crazy, all of this stuff that we're doing. I like, how many of these bloody friendlies do we need to see? And most of the time, I think, they, I think they are doing the. Um, I think they are doing the other games. I'm pretty sure we're playing yeah. Iceland last so. game before we go. Yeah, to the, yeah. Um, so yeah. that'll be fun, won't it? I'm quite buzzing for that one. And Iceland as well. Like, what, <laughs> what, do you, what do you want from an Iceland game before you go to a big tournament? Like, what? On Maybe Earth? they want revenge, mate, from 2016. That's probably what. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, Maybe, that. Maybe that is it. Maybe that's literally it. Like, it's just, it's just mind blowing. Yeah, it's shocking, man. Wow. Absolutely ridiculous that was. I remember watching that game, thinking, "My country are shambles." I honestly remember watching that. The game worst thinking, ever. That was yeah. absolutely the disgrace. The oh, worst. Christ. Absolutely disgraced by that. And I've seen some shocking ones as well, man. But, mm. yeah, I don't think we're winning this tournament with this manager, man. I'm sorry. I just don't think we are. I really don't. Mm. I know we've got the best squad and all this. and But he'll probably he'll probably rock up with a double pivot or say again, won't he? And, like, playing. We'll see Maguire at the back. We'll see, buddy, Jordan Henderson alongside Declan Rice. It'll be all this. We know it will. It's like... Yeah. it's Rashford uh, on the left. Rashford will be <laughs> on the left. Yeah. It's just yeah. unbelievable. Is is Mainu going to get a game? Because that kid's not come chance, in. Not a chance. He, he should be right. Right. End the sale. Yeah, little Cobby Mainu. He, he must be so excited. I mean, literally, they are about four or five miles away from where I live. That lot, and I bet Cobby Mainu think he won't get a run out. He's yeah. a, he's a sort of lad who perhaps should get a game for England. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. This sums it up. This sums twenty twenty four up, man. Big up, Aaron. Right? It says what's worse, Dan. Todd Bowley is your owner, Gary Neville is your manager, or Mark Warren is a pundit. Jesus, we've got all three, all three of those things are actually a thing. Unbelievable. Big up, Aaron, man. Uh, listen, it is mad, the internationals. Kobe Mainu deserves his call-up, in my opinion, because I think he's one of the only positives that Man United can say that yeah, they've got going yeah. for him, which isn't many at all. Um, will he get a chance? A lot of people are saying this is like a Theo Walcott in 2006, where it was just for show. They never got a look in. Um, Sven picked him and never played him. It was just pointless. You might as well have just taken, you know, Jermaine Defoe, wherever it was. He didn't take it that year. It's just a stupid thing to do, yeah. really. Um, yeah. So I can see that happening again. But, Matty, I wanted to ask you move on about this FFP thing, man, because this is getting mad. This is actually getting mad. Uh, yeah. Connor and me and Dave and Des had a chat midweek about it when Forrest got their points deducted. Connor's expecting to get Everton potentially more stuff happening. God knows what's happening if Forrest are going to get it as well. We've got Leicester now. Um, man, it's absolutely crazy. Um, yeah. And now we're hearing that uh, Chelsea and Man City, if they are found guilty, they could get chucked out of the ball of the leagues. And it's just like, what the hell's going on? Is it, I mean, sometimes you have to wake up and think, have I, have I taken something or is this actually going on? Like This, yeah. this is a football season, halfway through, well, more than halfway through. We're three quarters yeah. of a way through. At the moment, I look at a league table and I think, looks good now. No idea what it's going to look like. Not because there's 10 games left, because some of these points might not actually exist. Yeah. I, 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 for me, that's madness. Like, it's okay for me up the top because, you know, I'm not dealing with relegation. But that must be just in a stressful period for yeah. Dave, yourself, Dave, Connor, and, and of course, like, you know, Natalie and Nick as well. They must be thinking, what is actually going on here? It's just, it's just so poor. And I think... You know, when you break football down to the truest essence of what it is, it should be the same at the Emirates as it is at Hackney Marshes, right? That's why we all fell in love with the game. It's just the same throughout. Now we're looking at VAR decisions that take eight minutes, 90 plus 10 minutes in a game, a league table that isn't necessarily going to actually reflect the teams that have played in it. 
No, I, 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 being brutally honest, that like, I fall out of love with modern day football by the day. Like I just, I just hate everything that it stands for. And like, yeah, I said it on the last show that I was on with you. Like, looking at that as, as a, as a Brentford fan, you know, I want to stay up and whatever, but I don't want to look at Forest and be like, oh, we stayed up because they got deducted six. But that's not in the in the ethos and the spirit of football. I don't want to be sitting here being like, I hope Forest gets six points taken away. But like, that's not why any of us like football that's not why we got here that's not what we've done until it so i just i don't I'm, like there's so many intricacies in in how clubs are managed or whatever i just find it incredible that we have to get to this point before there's anyone interjecting or looking at books throughout the season or like i know it must be difficult and it probably far extends any of our pay grades but like it's how is something that's such a big business entity and so regulated fall into a thing of, of, of where we're at now. Like, it, it, it's just preposterous that I don't understand how we've got here and how no one's put more safeguarding measures in place to make sure that it doesn't happen. Um, and yeah, I, I hate being a person that only moans about it and has no solution, but I, I just don't know what they are. I don't know what you do. Like, I, it just shouldn't, football should not be in the state that it is in at the moment. It's going to continue to be in that state though, isn't it? Because yeah, of course, uh, it is. even yeah. with an independent regulator of gen of whatever it's called it's going to be called points off for definite isn't it but you, you've got to think about you know <laughs> sorry Dave. Um, <laughs> you, you have to think about, i'm dave duction <laughs> <laughs> be fair look i i look at this and i look i look at dave and i look at connor i go connor's six points you know and dave's is four that doesn't make sense to me it doesn't make sense they will just continue that. It's no, there's no punishment really for the bigger clubs, is it? You know, oh, we'll take a gamble, we'll overspend, we'll get deducted four to six points, we'll stay in this league, we'll keep creating the money, we'll still overspend and it will come on again. Um, you know, there's no solution. I don't think there's any fair solution to it because clubs like mine will never spend that money yeah. to that extent. And then clubs that are chasing the dream, the Manchester cities of this world, Arsenal, Spurs, if they want to do it, they have to spend because that's the only way they can keep up. The regulator is not going to he's not going to take loads of points off because it'll just send the whole league into chaos. And at yeah, that yeah. point, at that point, the Premier League loses rights and everybody starts buggering off to Saudi Arabia because you know yeah. if they if they don't can like. I, it, yeah, can I draw everybody's attention? I mean, the, there have been a lot of reasons not to be proud of Nottingham Forest recently. There are lots of reasons to be uncomfortable about it. You know, the, the, the transfer policy was clearly ludicrous last year and has led us down a, you know, a silly path. But in my, I was, and when I did the pod with Dan earlier in the week, I think it was a Monday afternoon or whatever it was, I was really, really down in the dumps. I mean, you know, <laughs> not because I just turned 60 and was feeling decrepit, but, you know, because of that. <laughs> but I, later in the afternoon, uh, after <laughs> after I'd done this podcast in B&Q car park and he talks it to, I read the, I read the Nottingham Forest statement and it is brilliant. Whoever's written it, I'm really proud of. Because basically what it does, it separates um, it separates 86 clubs away from six others. And it's almost, it's almost a declaration of intent. Why can't we spend to be like you six? You know what I mean? And it's, it's, it speaks. I read the statement. It was, it was quoted line for line verbatim on the ticker tape on Sky Sports Rolling News at six o'clock, right? And it and the not what Nottingham Forest were doing, they were speaking for Newcastle United, Aston Villa, Brentford, Fulham, Luton Town, Everton, Leicester City, Hull City, West Bromwich Albion, you name it, all the, right all the way down to Forest Green Rovers and Sutton United. Saying, you know, Marinakis, yeah, his ambition got carried away and all that, but he's got the money and he's thinking, I want to make Nottingham Forest a threat to them six. And now I'm getting punished for it, unless they're going to get punished for it. You know what I mean? And it, it, the, the statement is basically saying out in the open, putting it right front and centre in the arena, what all of us as football fans think. You know, I, I use the term on uh, with. with with Dares and Connor and, and Dan on Monday of, you know, keeping the elite elite. And then the statement, I was, somebody said, oh, Forrester releasing this statement. I was like, oh, goodness me, don't say the wrong thing. And then I read it and I thought, 
it's brilliantly worded. It, it is almost like a manifesto for the other 86. It's almost like, you know, what, we should like know our place. What, we should be like Palace and just finish in the middle and not be noticed or or be like Forest or Blades or Luton or, or, or Everton or whoever and go down and never, you know, it's our six and that, you know what I mean? It, it, I mean, I do think the European Super League will come and them six will go and, and then, you know, what's left. Oh, so, oh. You, you know, but oh, I would draw... Yeah, I would I would get everybody to look at that <laughs> because basically Forrest, and I was really proud of him in that moment, as I hadn't been about what I'd gone before, they were speaking to what most football fans, certainly the fans of the other 86 clubs in those, you know, top four leagues, are thinking. Mm. Listen, it was it was mad, and it was even madder to when I was reading more into it. And I did a show with with Terry on the terrace with LB, me and LB, and we talked about it. It was basically them saying, I think Chelsea are in trouble, by the way. Let me tell you that. Yeah. I think they're in serious... And City should be. Everybody's well, seen City. Everyone's saying about City and all this, and that's going to take a long time. But Chelsea are properly bad, mate. Because yeah. if it's true what they're talking about on TalkSport, that geezer from that, that finance geezer saying that if they don't sell Conor Gallagher for 60 million, Trevor Chalaber for like 30, and that Broya who's got the Fulham and can't get a game for like 35, 40. They are literally in the dodo, mate, like proper. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I look at it and I think like, good, because like these, this is a team that was sport for two, for two decades mm. that thought they could spend what they want. And I hope they are. If they've done, if they've all done wrong, likewise with City, they should have the book thrown at them if that's what he is, right? Well, on, the, on, the flip, on the flip side of that though, like, and, I, and I do agree with you in theory and in principle, but like, I just want to see it stop before it happens. I don't want to like yeah. say if City, say if City gets stripped of like all their titles in the last ten years, right? Then like what what will we even watch in those get like if it and like you yeah. know you don't yeah. want to be like Liverpool and get yeah. an asterisk it's a mess. It's a mess. Like, like it shouldn't get to that point. And like yeah, throw the book at them. But also like I and I love to hate Chelsea. Like I like, I don't want to see Chelsea pots. You might be different, but I don't want to see him decimated. I don't want to see him gone. And, you know, under the era of Abramovich, when this whole landslide of, of investment came in, it was almost like the bad team in like an American movie where like they had, a, they were like the elite and then, but the good moral and spirit would beat them. And that was great. And then I don't think any of us realised what that would open the door to for the next 10, 15, 20 years. But I just don't want to see sanctions imposed 10 years after someone has had their heyday, because ultimately, really, if you're being honest, it makes... That league and that title for however long obsolete, it's pointless. Like, why are we here? Madness, absolute yeah. madness. Yeah. It really is. And I'm like Armstrong's it... tours to France, isn't it? Same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. No, it's madness. It's a madness. Connor, what do you make of all this, man? I know you come on the other day, and it's all a bit of a madness. And I don't think I've seen you that emotional on the channel, mate. It was all over the place, weren't it? It really was with this motion, with this uh, Forest uh, drop points and Everton still looking like they might have another. You're waiting to hear. This, this is a mess, brother. Isn't it? It's three quarters away through the season, and all this is happening, man. Yeah, and you've still got the appeals to come. Um, I'm not too sure if Forest will appeal. Um, I, I'm not too sure. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit like, I mean, I, I'd take the four points, but it depends what the club value is. Yeah. It's worth the fight. Um, mm. Yeah, so I, we'll appeal. I think when we first put out our club statement, we put something um, as well. We put like a Saki, we'll see what the other punishments are for the other teams that are under investigation. Obviously, it's only Forrest that, yet, that have been punished since then. Whatever ours is, I feel like we're going to have the mentality we're going to appeal anyway because... We're going to say, you know, I think we're going to bring up the first lot being six. Uh, and I think we're just going to dig our heels in at this point. Um, there's rumours it might be four. There's rumours it might be two. If it was two, I, I think it'd be best to leave. If it's four, I can see us pushing, um, especially because it's it falls within double jeopardy potentially. So I think we've the lawyer we've got is quite a clever man. I think he was prepared that the, we knew the second one was coming when he was appealing the first. I think he's going to use his same the same tactics there to bounce onto the second, which the club said. They said they'll use it going forward. But it is just a bit grim, isn't it? You've got Leicester who are coming up um, and they're going to get points deduction. If you were Leicester, you were like, what's the bloody point coming up? We're like, essentially going to come straight back down now through like no fault of their own. Like, yeah. It's mad. I mean, and it's no oh, surprise it's their form has dropped because of the consequence of this as well. Don't be surprised. There's no, that's a coincidence as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Like a... 
way flying to win that championship. Mad, isn't it? They're second, they're second place, and Ipswich could overtake them now. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. uh... want Ipswich to go up. <laughs> well, it's demoralising for them, isn't it? I mean, uh, I'm quite glad because Leicester were a bit uh, when we were Leicester were one of the ones that were going to sue us um, because of the because we breached it, which is quite ironic now and a bit hypocritical when you're breaking it yourselves. <laughs> well, it's a bit funny, isn't it? So, and also they're one of the ones that chant the poverty chants every year when they play us and stuff. So you know what, reap what you sow there. But if it was any other club, I'd say, what a tough situation. How demoralising for your fans and your players. Yeah. As soon as you come up, bang, uphill battle straight away, straight from the off. And I don't think they're the only ones. I think I read, um, I think it might be the fellow you're on about that was on TalkSport that I think he's like yeah. SLBSN on Twitter. I think he was saying before, Forrest are looking to sell Gibbs, White and Murillo for quite high. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's talk, Connor, that Forrest is going to have to sell somebody of... Morgan's ilk or, or somebody like that. We were linked, we were linked to... without Murillo yesterday, Dave. Arsenal yeah. were linked without Murillo. I don't know. Well, I'll tell, but... I tell you what, he, he nearly scored from five miles out at Luton. You asked Dave. He, he took a free kick from his own half and he had Kaminsky backtracking. But I'll tell you what happened at the end. He was stood in front of the away and there were some people down the front of our away end and he was doing this kind of like there was, there was clearly some abuse going on. You know, so it was a bit, I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe they're having Leicester back for having the temerity to win the Premier League a few years ago. How dare they? <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe that's what they're having them back. To be honest, I'm... which yeah, you know. So um, with us, yeah, I think there'll be more sales. But you know, I'm just thinking like you're talking about Bowley. I mean, I I was sort of saying that Marinakis got carried away, but you know, he's no worse than Bowley. He, he, Bowley's oh, you know, he's the, the worst. Trouble, mate. The trouble Bowley's is you, you've got people ru- running great institutions of football and the playing of a ball around the field like Matty talks about who has Tom Bowley ever played football? No. Has Marinakis no, ever no. played football? No. Not if I'd like Gary Birtles to be the owner of Nottingham Forest or or John McGovern or Nigel Jemson or Robbie Earnshaw or somebody like who knows what it means. The great Alan Hill, who was a mate of my dad's worked for Cluffy Wright. Alan still goes to the games. He knows more about football than most people have forgotten. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And he's just People like that, proper football people should be running it. You know, I mean, if, if you're at Brentford, go get get a, a Brentford legend. I'd get Joe Royal running Everton. Get Mick, let Mick Arford run, run you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Fulham, get, I don't know, go get, I don't know, go get Gordon I think Davies Matt, back. Matt, yeah. Matt, hit, Matt hit the nail on the head earlier saying the values of football, the principles have just completely gone away. Yeah, no, VAR, the, the West Ham decision the other day, six minutes to say, yes, it was, it was hot. Not yeah, a goal yeah. or a handball, not you know the yellow, blue cards potentially being introduced next season. Oh, God. Fans being priced out. Look at Tottenham. There's a big ban at the game last week, and Ron and they wanted they wanted um, the Tottenham owner out because basically he's, ta- he's taken away the concessions for Tottenham fans. Yeah. Man United supposedly are imposing a limit if you don't attend so many home games as a fan, a season ticket holder, you're going to lose your season ticket rights. So then Fulham are looking at that. And to be honest, do they care about every, people on this, seven of us on this call? They don't, you know, six of us on this call? No. Nah. The owners don't nah. care about us anymore. The game's moved on. International friendlies. It's all about sponsorship, promotion, Saudi Arabia money here, Abu Dhabi money there. They don't care about England versus Brazil. It's money, 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 sponsorship, TV rights, etc. They don't give a, excuse my French, about what, what the what clubs the players play for and the media they'll, and, put, what, they'll put ridiculous games on the yeah, television no. that no yeah, fans exactly. get to and from home that's another so, thing they do yeah, yeah, Newcastle. Exactly. that was the best one no Bournemouth Newcastle you can't get further away in the country oh. and they're mm. doing it at 8 p.m on a Sunday night wherever it was and I'm like mm. what is actually happening here like, and also how, how last minute they <clears> change throat> those throat> games as well like I, I I think went to Newcastle the other year they changed the date or the time on a Saturday for TV rights and it was like Six days before or something. It's like yeah. us, us, at, us at Newcastle on Boxing Day, a half twelve kickoff. You know, so I I couldn't. You know, basically, so let, let's put it like this: so Boxing Day, my little mum is on her own. You know, and it's like, what do I do? Is it brings in this moral dilemma? Of course it does. No, no, you know, it's it, and it, again. It, it affects all those guys, us six, and the people we kind of speak on behalf of. Yeah, you know what I mean, and it's the game. Yeah. The, this phrase, "the game has gone," keeps raising its head, and I said, "No, it hasn't." But in some ways, it has. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree yeah. with that when people say that. I must say, um, go on, Connor. 
Uh, just to get that as well, like with Forest's players potentially being um, sold, it just that seems to be what your options are if you're not one of the one of the top six is yeah, points yeah. deductions uh, or yeah. sell your best assets to clubs to keep, yeah, keep yeah. out. And like someone said here uh, in the chat about Forest taking a gamble and it backfired, and they did sign a lot of players, but is is that? How? Why is that not allowed? If you can afford it and the money's there, which is why yeah. it should only ever be to protect clubs yeah. from going bust. Exactly. Why can't you be ambitious? The top are spending. Why can't the bottom if they can afford it? My only prefix mm. is if they can afford it. If you're going to break, you know, bankrupt your club for the sake of something special, then I'd argue that's a bit of a danger. And owners like that shouldn't really be allowed to own football clubs because you're risking livelihoods for it. But yeah, if yeah. you've got the money spend it you know you shouldn't have to like we're, we're probably gonna have to sell Bramfweight, probably have to go sell onana what state our squad's going to be in once those two go god knows and that's going to be the same for a lot of clubs it's either sell your best assets to the top six uh because they're the only ones that can afford to spend that type of money or have more points deduction season on season until you're relegated and i'll have to sell your best assets anyway because they won't play in the championship no, you're yeah. speaking facts, Connor. You're absolutely speaking yeah. facts, man. And very, listen, if Everton have to sell, sell Pickford, Adana and Brantway, you must be looking as a fan thinking, where are we going? What What is happening here? Like, It's mad, bro. It really is. Listen, Amelia, I know you've got to go. Before you do go, bruv, um, Harry Kane, still overrated for you? <laughs> is he going to win a German, <laughs> Is he going to win a Bundesliga? I told you, he's not going to win it. He's not going to win it this year. So, um Look, he's a top international striker. He's a top international, you know, play for the domestic leagues. But let's see what he can do in the main tournament. That's that's my own criticism of Hurricane. Big games, when it counts against top six opposition, his, his scoring rate is not as good as it should be. England let's, probably let's would have won the World Cup. If he can warrant that statue that he's got, if anyone yeah. sees it. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's, well, let's see if he can do it this year. This is the best England team. Best chance England will win a tournament. But, you know, there have been chances under this manager... And Harry Kane in those big games at France a couple of years ago, when it counts, where was he? That, that's mm. my criticism of Harry Kane. Great striker. Smashed it over the bar. That's what yeah. he did. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, but look, uh, nothing else. Go back, to the, the, go back to our clubs. Look at Luton. You know, all those years. Dave, you got Reading, relegated. Reading. You went into Reading. the bottom tier. Look where you are now. Reading are going through the same fate now. Reading are pretty much bust. Yeah. They're having to sell all yeah. their assets. Look, these are a club that was in the Premier League. We've come in our great escape. 15, 16 years ago, we played rele- Reading in a relegation dogfight. We won 2-0 yeah. at their ground. They were a Premier League team barely 15, 16 years ago. And look, now they're bust. My non-league team, Torquay United, have gone into administration. It's And then you've got clubs like the Chelsea's and Man City's continuing to breach all the rules, flout all the rules. Mm. It's not a level playing field out there. But look, all, our, all six of us, all our clubs, we love our clubs. The game is changing. Fans Absolutely, man. Do not, fans Listen, do not count. Fans are not countable. But enjoy gonna, it while you I'm can. Gonna, I'm going to have to let you go, Emilio, because your wife is telling me you're just starving. Oh. And it's time to go. No, time you can't be go. sleeping on the house. sofa on holiday. Okay. You're going to be the dog When <laughs> I'm calling you. <laughs> All the best, Emilio, guys. Enjoy your holiday, Thank you very much. Take care. Love to the Reynolds, mate. Enjoy your holiday, man. See you later, bro. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. What a legend. That's like, Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> nothing like it. Nothing like it. <laughs> Look at Cali. Oh, Thanks, class. man. You're welcome, Cali. You're welcome. Enjoy your holiday. <laughs> uh, listen, Dave Gregory, I want you to get your thoughts on this before we sort of come to the last few minutes because it's massive for Luton and Luton are being forgotten about for the pure fact that you ain't done anything wrong. <laughs> but this is key, man, for you. Absolutely massive for you. Uh, look, I think we said earlier, points deductions, not fair, really, but they've happened. And, and I, I think I put a thing on the Nottingham Forest website that someone asked me to write. And I said, I can easily say rules are rules. If you break the rules, you should get punished. Uh, but it is a top six versus the rest, isn't it? And I feel that way. So I'm I'm disappointed that if we stayed up, and I don't think the points deduction is going to make a jot of difference to, to Forest or Everton at the end. Because I look at the fixtures and I think, well, maybe they just worked it out that we're not going to win that many games going in. I would have, I would have expected Forest to have more. I would have expected um, Everton to have appealed. And you know, we did when Luton got deducted thirty points. I said this the other week. There was no right to appeal. They took our. They said if you appeal, we'll take your golden ticket away from you. You will never be a league football team again. So we just went. All right, we'll have it. 
and look at, you know, it's taken us, what, 10 years to get back here. Um, so I'm disappointed for that because it's not a fair playing field and it never will be a fair playing field. And that is the other issue. If you've got billionaire owners that are allowed to spend their billions on their players, um, my little team that's owned by fans um, is never going to compete to that level ever unless some, um, and then uh, do I want, do I want someone to come in and, and spend crap loads of money? Um, probably not, probably not because it'll probably be the end of our club. Um, so, you know, you look at, you look at Brentford's model for the last couple of seasons, you look at Brighton's model and you think, I want to be like them. I want to be that team that generates their own income. They spend it, but there is no way, there is no way that they can make it fair. And I'm genuinely joking about an independent football regulator. What are they going to do differently? They, you know, they, they get their new owners in, they give them this, you know, test that they can be a great owner and look how much they balls that up all of the time. Reading's problem overspent to try and chase the dream. Um, then they've got crap ownership and the crap owner is not doing enough. I, I feel sorry for all those fans. I've been through it. I've been through it. I've been to the depths of this football pyramid for me as a fan. And I don't think anyone should get it. But what choice is there? If there's no deterrent, there's no, there's no adequate deterrent. That's the other point. There is no adequate. If you overspend, then we're going to put you in the bottom half of the league or whatever. It's not going to happen. And you're yeah. never going to be able to fight the big boys ever. So, you know, I'm disappointed. And, and I have to be honest, I was quite shocked that Forrest only got, you know, that number of points deducted. I've even forgotten how many it was now. It's so small. And, uh, and, and you know, Connor, I know I've had a go at you a couple of times, but I, I, I feel for you guys. No, I genuinely feel for, for, for the clubs that are getting – the fans really that suffer, isn't it? It's the fans that suffer all of the time because yeah. you know, Man, City fans a, Man City fans have had a great few years. They've won crap loads. They ain't taking that away from them, even if you take it away from them, if you know what I mean. Yeah. They, they've had that experience. And at the expense of our teams, or not so much my team, but you guys, you know. And I think that's that's the thing that does my head in, really, with it all. And I look at, I look at you know, well-run clubs and think they deserve more. But there is no, I don't even know how they're going to address it. I don't know how they can address it. I don't know what an independent commissioner could say to Manchester City. Okay, don't spend um, 10 billion pounds. There you go. If you spend any more than that, we'll relegate you. Well, that's worth a bash, isn't it? We could get all that income from all those competitions, just about stay in, and then we don't get no punishment. And I think that's, yeah. that's the issue. I think punishment should fit the crime. But the problem is there's no structure to that crime because they don't get away with what they want. And, and, that, and I'm, not, I'm not mentioning current people on here. Um, you know, you take your punt, you get in the division, you take your punt. Luton decided not to. Um, Forrest, they did the other season they, and they stayed up. So it paid off and they got some more money. And, you know, yeah. so you, it, it's your owners really and the fans suffer because of unscrupulous ownership. And, and I hope every club can screen their own owners to make sure they don't get the idiots in. You know, you get your idiots in from, you know, the Reading guy. I can't remember his name, uh, to be honest. But, um, you know, he's just turned them out, and he? He's just turned them over. He wants the money. He just wants to turn them over. And, you know, I just they, – but they've been in that that downfall since they tried to stay in the Premier League and overspent. Huddersfield, yeah. same thing. Um, just got to look at those other teams. Portsmouth, look what happened. Stoke. Been Stoke. And they just haven't got back, and they've been hit financially because of it. Um, mm. and that's because of their ownership, not because of the rules. It's because of their ownership are chasing to stay in this billion pound division, uh, where actually you might earn a billion pound, but you spend a billion and a half to stay in it. What's the point? Yeah. And mm. it's never going to be Great. fair. Um, I, I think the days of when Leicester city or a Leicester city can win the league as well gone. And, yeah. Yeah. And it's mad because that was only a few years ago, man. You know, yeah. that's how quickly yeah. it's gone. Like, it's mad. It yeah. really is. But that's why I love this show, man, because it gives you the opinions of both of you guys who, you know, see things completely different to us at the top, you know, and it really does. You know, and we look down, and I'm devastated if Arsenal don't win the league. And you guys are just in that different position of like this FFP thing is a mess down the bottom. It really is mad. You know, it comes back to what Matt says about how, how football has changed. And, you know, people always said to me, oh, it's brilliant growing up, brilliant growing up. And I always think, oh, they're going to say that because, you know, I wasn't there. But I, honestly, now I'm starting to say it. I'm thinking, bloody, yeah. I love it in the 90s. Like, it was so much better. And I'm like, Christ, I sound like my granddad and my dad now. But it's, it's, it is true. You know, it really you is. Do, you do wonder how much of it is that, right? You do wonder, like, I, like, I hear myself saying stuff of that ilk and being like, Facts. he's just, 
being a bit of an old boy and prick these days, or like, it's all, <laughs> or like, like, you, know, like you, have to, you have to get schooled on it. You know, you look at like what I remember, uh, like probably this time last year, a couple of years ago, when we were talking about the um, the the Super League stuff coming together, and you know, I think we agree it's it's absolutely terrible. But you know, the Premier League starting wasn't that far removed from what the Super League was, right? In '92 or '93, it was like a breakout franchise. We've all kind of grown up with it, or like if you've grown up yeah. with it, that's how I knew football. And then you're like, you know, I remember my, my old man moaning about that at the time, being like, oh, it's a disgrace. Da, 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 da. And you're like, so it's just hard to be objective and be like, is that just football's evolution? And we don't like the evolution of football. Like, mm. talking subjectively, I hate it and I don't like where football's going at all. But is it just the part and the narrative that Maybe. is. is on us, but maybe some of it. I think some of it is more, most importantly, are we just old and boring and we just need to show? <laughs> well, Dave Asprey is, yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> you Matt, Matt, don't ever get like me, mate, as you approach the season 30. Please don't let me be a don't let me be a role model for anybody. But you know what, mate? I'm just I, trying I, to be I, like I, Dave. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just get a with that. I'm just trying to look like, be like hey, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I tell you what though, you know, you look back in the history books and you you know, and I'm not one for these like, oh, it was better back in the day, but you know, sometimes you think, well, maybe it was, you know, there'll be times where it's this idea, and, and I mentioned it on Monday, where you take the NFL, for example, where their overriding principle the, the NFL wants is parity. So when they set out the second week of uh, the second Sunday of September every year, the lowest team down the bottom, you know, this year I think the New England Patriots and the Chiefs at the top, they all set out, all 32, thinking we can reach a Super Bowl, right? And it's the same with the NRL, the Australian Rugby League, which I think is the hardest, toughest sporting competition in the world, right? Any of those can win it, whether it's Penrith or it's Canterbury or whoever. <laughs> When we set, when Forest set out, or Brentford set out, or Luton or Everton set out for the Premier League, somebody said to me, I, "I'm sick of saying in these last two seasons, Potsy, it's become like my mantra, 17th or bust." And <laughs> and, and and so everybody's got these qualified definitions of success. Do you know what I mean? And it's just why can't you know Marinak is? I mean, I've moaned about him plenty, but you know the old boy, right? He's going. I've got the money. He said to Steve, he said to the, the people of Nottingham, there were 30,000 people in uh, Market Square in Nottingham the day after we beat Huddersfield, right? And he came onto the balcony and in front of all those people, and there were people watching on the telly, I am going to give Steve Cooper, as it was at the time, I'm going to give him what he wants in order to make us competitive in this league. And, OK, it was a bit scattergun, but the intention, I think, was probably honourable. He said... I'm going to do it. And he kind of put his money where his mouth was, you know, and, and it's just like, you know, I mean, Newcastle, I've got as much money. I mean, Newcastle are the ones really Newcastle have got all this money. And yet Amanda Stavely and whoever else up there is like, Oh, uh, should we spend it or what? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and Newcastle, I think for Newcastle, I, the other night, when I read the statement, I thought Forrest was speaking for Newcastle more than anybody because Newcastle have got the, the fiscal firepower. If they want to use it and unfurl it, yeah, this so, FFP you know, and profit and sustainability has come at the wrong time for Newcastle. They haven't even spent yet, and they're being told they've got to no. sell players potentially. It's yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, it really yeah, is. Yeah, but listen, um, we're coming to a close. I want to give you all 30 seconds as to each as to where you are with your clubs right now down the bottom. And Matty, I'm going to start with you because Brentford, man, what the hell is going on? The wall, wall, wheels are coming off, bro. Are you worried about <laughs> a relegation no, fight, bro? Or are you going to be all right? Every, no, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. I think we'll have enough. Uh, I think anyone that doesn't support Brentford just thought when Tony's back, Brentford will be back firing. But we've had a lot of injuries. We've had, I think, the most minutes per injured player out of anyone in the league so not the most injuries but we've we've lost so many people throughout the year um i think this is a this is a humbling season we haven't had the right players to play the way that we have and we've just been a bit found out and we don't have enough squad depth but i think we've got enough to stay up so it's just a it's a it's a learning season if we go down i worry that we're not coming back up anytime soon but uh but yeah it's just I, I, I hate moaning about injuries, but I think we all have a moan every now and again, again about injuries. And I think we've just been a bit done over by it. Um, 
So yeah, didn't do enough in the transfer windows, which I've said the whole time. But uh, yeah, hopefully enough to stay up um, and then draw it for next season. Yeah, man, you're always going to have a chance of scoring with Tony and with Bremi when he's fit and with Vissa. So I think they are going to be the ones you're going to have to need to rely on and lean on, mate, to keep you in this league for sure. But uh, you're yeah, flirting with yeah. it at the moment, Matt. I never had you going down, but you're flirting with it at the moment. I'll tell you that. Uh, Just making it one. interesting. Just making it interesting. Yeah, that's all it is. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, man. Connor, let's come to you next, mate. Yeah, uh, we've got Bournemouth in like nine days. Um, so we've had like a really nice break, obviously with the international window and then Liverpool's, the, with the game we're meant to be playing Liverpool, uh, it's been postponed to the end, you know, whenever they can fit it in because of Liverpool's cup competitions. So yeah, had a couple of weeks in Portugal, I think the lads have had. Nice little training camp there. Uh, hopefully working on some of the things that are hindering us in a minute. And then, I mean, Bournemouth will be the big tell. I always think it's a bit... Um, it's a bit of unwanted pressure when you do these camps as much as they're probably needed. Uh, it does get out to the media. Then it's Everton have spent a week in Portugal on the sun. And then if you don't rock up on against Bournemouth and the show, the next narrative is what were you doing in Portugal, lads? Um, and we've had like Slapgate since come out as well. Well, that's the worry. And like, we've had Slapgate <laughs> with Nathan Patterson and Sean Deitch, which was like a joke that's been blown way out of proportion by the media uh, and therefore fans. Um, so yeah, it just got to hope we get a good good uh, result against Bournemouth. But it's in our hands. I think I said it the other day when I was on midweek. It's in our hands. We play Luton still. We play. Um, I think we might still play Forest. We yeah, play yours. Bournemouth. Yeah, we play. We play the teams around us. So you know, points deductions or not, you want to stay up. You've got to beat the people around you. Yeah, man. Facts. Dave Asprey, how you feeling, bro? <laughs> Well, um, aged a bit, let's put it like that, um, no. what with like Sunday and then like Monday, but at least we know now. And I'd like I'd like to hope that, as it as was the case when Everton had theirs taken off, Everton went on a, they used it as a motivational tool and they went on a run. I'd like to think that'll happen, that, you know, we'll close ranks. We have a hell of a lot of work to do. We've got, I mean, of our last nine in there is Tottenham away and City at home. So they're probably two that will get away from us. We've got Chelsea at home as well. But we have to go to Goodison. We have to go to Turf Moor. We have to go to Bramall Lane. We've got Wolves, Fulham and Palace come in. So I think Forest could pick up some some of the 27 points on offer. Will we will we stay up? I, I mean, I said on Monday, I thought we'd get relegated. But then I was in the, the slough of despond about the points. Deduction. I just don't know. I really don't know. None of us know. Matty doesn't know about Brentford. Dave doesn't know about Luton. Connor, you don't know about Everton. The truth is, Dan, us four are all united in the uncertainty, really. But what I would like to see is, I mean, I was disappointed at Brighton that there wasn't a reaction to the anger after the Liverpool game. I thought, you know, Forrest, Forrest will go on the pitch and take that anger out on Brighton. They did nothing of the sort. Um, and they keep finding ways to not get wins that they should get. And I, with all due respect to Dave, I thought... Forest. I mean, they had two cleared off the line. They had some other chances. Once they weathered the early Ross Barkley storm, and what a player he is, a superb player. Love watching Ross Barkley. Should be in the England yeah. squad. Forget Jordan Henderson, get Ross in. If Ross played for one of the big six, he'd be a guaranteed star. I think he's an outstanding player. I love him in our midfield. You know, I thought Forrest ought to win it, but we've got this Achilles Healer set piece. So who knows? I'll just keep turning up here until I don't. <laughs> we'll see how we get on. But I can't wait for the Palace game a week on. Uh, we've got Palace and then we've got Fulham on a Tuesday night. So, um, looking forward to those and we'll see how we get on. Yeah, man, absolutely. And Palace and Fulham, to be fair, the sort of games that you do want because they're kind of mid-table, not fighting for stuff. Yeah. However, they have just spanked Tottenham 3-0. We should be fine. Yeah, so yeah. You never know. You never yeah. know More worried about Fulham um, than Tottenham Palace, yeah. Yeah, mad, isn't it? Mad. Um, Dave Gregory. Come on, man. Give me some faith. I mean, you've got Man City, <laughs> Arsenal, Liverpool and Spurs. Hey, next. Wow. Spurs first, then Arsenal. And then we have a little game against Bournemouth. We need to get that one in. And then Manchester City. So look, I'm writing three of those off straight away if we get anything from those three, you know, Spurs. But the other thing that interests me at right now is that we've all discounted Burnley out of this, but they're only four points off it now. Yeah, true. And true. They, you know, they've play. got to play everyone else. So... You yeah. know, like you say, Everton have got to play them. Um, so I don't know where we're going to be. I know that we've got a nine-game season. As it stands, we have to match Nottingham Forest results. If we match Nottingham Forest results, we don't get relegated. However, if Burnley pick up, 
then we might if you know and i actually i did i think the last time i was on the same time as matt i might have said that i i thought brentford might be in trouble i was thought they was on a big and you know you, i don't think you can discount brentford for you know manchester united brighton villa you know so next when the when the football restarts you know nottingham forest and luton could change places in a week and then you know we're chasing again but now i'm worried that brentford will catch up so we've got another team to get over um mm. but it's still in our own hands as everybody's also said so can we win i hope so i hope so i'm still optimistically hopeful but um as every game goes you know maybe we'll get a result we haven't had a big result against a big team anywhere yet ap- apart from newcastle mm. at home maybe we 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 do one um mm. so you know maybe we might get something but i look at our run and i just think well if we don't get anything from bournemouth then we have to beat brentford we have to beat wolves we have to beat everton then we're at west ham and we finish at fulham fulham at home um i think we're running out of games if i'm honest i think the other teams our injuries have been really bad um mm. i think mm. at the end of the day i think maybe we just might not have enough to stay in it and i, I that's what disappoints me because i think we've been competitive and i think like on like dave said on saturday there were there were moments when i thought we was in control of the game to start with mm. but it was a bit of an end-to-end game in the end um, yeah it was and you know yeah. if if mengi's goal stood before at half time it would have been a different match for definite yeah yeah Absolutely. Um, you know, Luke Berry comes on, scores a goal in the Premier League. That makes him score for Luton Town in every division. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, wow. you just enjoyed that. I enjoyed the atmosphere. I just don't know that we've got enough in us. And I, th- I genuinely think that the Bournemouth away game has killed us off. I think that that killed us off. Um, and, massive, um, wasn't it? Massive. I'm really massive. But you know what? Get three points at Spurs and I start dreaming again, don't I? Oh, I hope you do, mate. Yeah. I really I hope you say, do. I didn't say Arsenal. Obviously, I'd like to get three points at Arsenal. <laughs> 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 well, listen, man, we'll definitely meet up at the Emirates for sure, Dave. That is yeah. a certainty. So I'll look forward to that. Listen, I've got to get out of here, guys. But big up to both the Daves. Big up to Connor. Big up to Matt as well. Uh, and of course, big up to Emilio as well, who's on holiday, who kindly joined us. Uh, thank you so much. Do me a favor, please, people. Make sure you smash the likes on this. Make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for letting us get to 17K last night. That's amazing. Our next target is obviously 20. So thank you all so much for that. Um, and uh, make sure you click on the pinned comments for Surfshark VPN uh, and get yourself Surfshark as well uh, before you get out of here. We're out of here, people. Take it easy. We'll see you next time. Laters. Yeah.